The season of Advent helps us in our preparation for Christmas, where we recall in faith Christ's coming among us. It is also a time in which we look at our present lives and reflect on His coming and at the end of the ages. It is definitely a season of joyous expectation in light of the Feast of Christmas. However, it is also a time of preparation in which we are invited to renew our Christian faith. We can become more attentive to the gift of our faith and to explore the implications of what it means to believe in the person of Christ, and above all, to become more grateful for the presence of God's love, which is fully manifest in the person of Christ. On the first Sunday of Advent, these very themes we addressed in the opening prayer at Mass. Father in heaven, our hearts desire the warmth of your love, and our minds are searching for the light of your word. Increase our longing for Christ, our Savior, and give us the strength to grow in love, that the dawn of his coming may find us rejoicing in his presence and welcome the light of his truth. Notice that in this prayer we acknowledge Advent as a time in which our hearts are to become more aware of the warmth of God's love. It is also a time for our minds to receive in new ways the Word of God through the Scriptures and thus to welcome the light of His truth. Finally, it is a time to grow in the strength of Christ's love so that as we prepare to celebrate the dawn of His coming at Christmas, we may find, he may find us rejoicing in his presence more fully each day. In the season of Advent, the Office of Readings has St. Charles Borromeo also echoing the importance of this Advent season. Each year, the Church recalls this mystery, and she urges us to renew the memory of the great love God has shown us. He also goes on to state, this holy season of Advent teaches us that Christ's coming was not only for the benefit of his contemporaries, but the power of his coming has to be communicated to us all, especially in our present day. As Christians, we are called to share in this power of his coming through faith. The Church proclaims this faith in Christ's coming through the prayers we express in the scriptures that we read in Advent, the songs and the hymns that we sing, and the very rituals and sacraments we celebrate during this time of preparation. One important gift of faith which we can receive in Advent and at Christmas is a profound sense of gratitude for His presence, and thus the need to prepare our hearts for the power of such an event in our lives today. This Christian attitude and disposition of gratitude is most vividly reflected in the role of Mary, the mother of our Lord. In the early church, we know that there was a progressive discovery through faith to see the fullness of Mary's role in God's plan of salvation history. Scripture records her role in God's plan from the outset as the mother of our Lord. In the first two chapters of Matthew's Gospel, he records the infancy of Christ, but what is most interesting is that Mary is only named and speaks no words. The birth of our Lord is recorded almost exclusively from the experience of Joseph. In contrast, Luke's Gospel portrays Mary in a much more prominent role, and thus it is through this inspired narrative that we see the outline of her vocation from God, the Annunciation, the greeting and the message of the angel Gabriel. The stirrings of Mary's heart and her initial response in faith is that of a question. How can this be? Then let it be done according to your word. The progress of her belief in God's promises and her confidence to say yes is truly inspiring for each Christian who has struggled to answer their own vocation call. Let it be according to your word. 
Then through prayer and the reflection upon God's grace at work in her life, we see the ultimate response of gratitude. Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. In a homily given by John Paul II on the solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God, he made the following statement and insight. Mary was the memory of the Church, that from the beginning she was fixed on the mystery of this newborn child, that she was attentive to this experience as the mystery of God's salvation, and that her fiat, her yes, progressively unfolded in her life, and that thus her memory played an important role in the faith of the Church. In Advent, the Church's memory becomes reflected through the memory of Mary. To identify with Mary in faith during this season is to be open to receive what she received. The first gift was that of a profound sense of gratitude for the warmth of God's love given to her in Christ. His birth, his coming into this world, was revealed through the fullness of God's love, and Mary was the first to believe in this love and to experience it in her life. In my years of experience as a priest, I've always been inspired and somewhat humbled by the stories that people have shared with me concerning their own lives of faith. And I've encountered this many times throughout ministry. There is a profound sense of gratitude of how they have first come to experience Christ. And in sharing their stories, it has been a gift to me. Each story is unique, but it is inspiring to see how they have come to the faith, often in common ways, through family, parents and grandparents, through teachers in school, or in the pastoral care that they've experienced in the parish community, or the meeting of a priest, or the impact and witness of individuals who live their life with joy because of faith. This gratitude is also very evident and those men and women who are moved to inquire about the faith and enter the process of Christian initiation as adults. If you've ever been involved in this process of inquiry and assisted and accompanied those in the catechesis of their faith, you will often encounter this expression of gratitude. The RCI is a process within the Church that it is a symbol of the Incarnation. It is a Christ event and it is the birth of faith in individuals. The second gift that Mary received was the grace of being ready and attentive, of being open to God and to his power in her life. This coming of Christ would disrupt her plans, would challenge her life, her relationships of family. Yet through her yes, she would begin to see how God had chosen her to be the incarnate vision of his Son through her life. This is a grace that each of us receives in responding in truth and freedom to our vocation and calling in life. We are called to imitate Mary's response in choosing our own life's vocation. I've also witnessed this in my vocational ministry as a seminary rector in accompanying those who are discerning their call to the priesthood. In a spiritual and communal way, it was very evident when the men joined to pray the rosary at night in the chapel. It was an expression of their devotion to our Blessed Mother, but it was also a daily time in which they entered into the mystery and the memory of Mary. I could not help but think in my prayer with them that Mary's model and disposition of accepting her own vocation was being received as grace by these men in such moments of prayer. As Advent unfolds, it is my hope that the gifts that Mary received may be part of our own preparation and reflection of the coming of Christ, not only in our lives, but also in the lives of others, and to be very grateful for the gift of this faith and to respond with fidelity to the vocations that God has given to each of us. This is Mary's role as we remember and meditate on the mystery of Advent. <laughs>